Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Rachel. I'm Hannah. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. Today, we are reviewing the book and movie. Well, we're not reviewing the book, but we're comparing them. But we're reviewing the movie, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. And I have practiced all morning so that I wouldn't F that up the first time. The rest of the time, no promises, people. Now, Hannah, give us the recap. Now, it's my turn to say it. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society is a film based off of a book. The film follows Juliet, who is a writer in London. One day, she gets a letter from a man from Guernsey named Dossie, saying that he has one of her books and about a society he is part of. Juliet and Dossie keep writing letters back and forth until one day she goes to visit the society. Juliet decides to stay in Guernsey to learn more about the story of the society and a member they lost named Elizabeth. After she has been there for a while, her fiancé Mark shows up and takes her back to London. When Juliet is back in London, she decides two things. To write the story of the society and to end her engagement to Mark. Juliet ends up moving to Guernsey to be around the people who are now her family. Lovely. So Hannah told me that she kept this a little brief and vague for us so that we can delve into the many, many, many storylines of the movie and the many, many, many more that weren't in the movie from the book. So when Rachel told me there was more in the book than there is in the movie, I was like, excuse me? There's already a lot happening in this movie. Explain this to me, but, well, okay, um, do you want my opinion of the movie, or do you want to give yours first before? Um, it doesn't matter. I won't change my opinion, so whatever you want to do first. (laughs) Okay, well, that sounds a little juicy. What is your opinion of the movie, Hannah? Well, I did like the movie, but I also felt that it was very predictable. I knew where it was going the whole time. Uh, The only thing that I didn't find predictable was that, like, immediately I didn't know Elizabeth was going to be dead. As soon as, like, that story started unfolding, I knew that Dossie wasn't the dad. I knew that it was some sort of affair. I knew, or, like, she wasn't supposed to be with the person she was with. And then eventually I did figure out that she was dead before they said that she was dead, but and obviously, you know that Dossie and Juliet are going to end up together. That was from mom- the moment they started writing a letter together. I was like, oh, yeah, they're end game right there. That's, that's that. I do want to say one thing. Okay, here's the funniest thing. When I was reading the book, so I was gifted this book from my boyfriend's parents. And I was not even remotely aware of how in love with the book I was going to become. Uh, but I love the book so much but when I was reading it so it's all letters to each other that's the whole book is people writing letters everyone writing letters to each other it's not just Dossie and Juliet it's everyone Sydney and Juliet you know Juliet and Mark you know Juliet and Mrs. Moggery like everybody and, and here is writing letters to each other but I thought that Dossie was like an old man until they started like falling in love and I was like wait a minute is he like 30? I was absolutely shocked when they started like proposing the love story through the letters. I was like, wait, no one told me this. Because Dozzy Adams just sounds like a 75 year old man to me. Like that name was absolutely not a young man in my in my head. So that's the funniest thing that I got. And I do agree that this movie was really predictable and I think, I don't know if it's the lack of letters that makes it that way and the way that they were trying to portray it, but I just, like, I literally wrote, like, the twists are not as big as they think they are in this movie when they're, like, revealing everything. Yeah, I I feel like that's a good way to put it. Oh, honestly, I guess, I don't, I think before I send my biggest surprise was that she ended up dead which eventually I did figure out but I guess the other thing that surprised me was that she wasn't that Elizabeth wasn't Amelia's daughter 
that was a surprising fact to me. I think that was actually like the only thing that really like took me off. I was like, oh, okay. But everything else, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. and going off of that, I don't particularly remember um, Amelia's actual daughter, Jane, and like dying before. I think that was in the book, I'm pretty sure. But they play up Amelia's disdain for um, Juliet because she was not upset that she was coming. The only person that was upset that Juliet was coming was the woman that she was staying with at the beginning who like hated her. And the stuff that she was saying to Juliet, um, I think her name was Charlotte or something. So Juliet stays with this woman who has like a couple rooms for rent at the beginning of this book or at the beginning of her stay in Guernsey. And she says things like, you shouldn't trust them. Like, they're playing up Elizabeth like she's this wonderful person, but she has secrets of her own. Like, she was writing Juliet letters that were saying this, obviously, and being like, you shouldn't trust this literary society and all this stuff. So they did their best, I feel like, at transferring the epistolary novel to this movie but I felt like we lost so much depth in the characters. The actors did a very good job at like trying to get the personalities through, but I just felt like so much of them were lost just because it was focused on Juliet trying to figure out about Elizabeth or Juliet trying to figure out about XYZ and not so much about like them telling her her past which yes would have been very expositional but this could have been made into more of like an indie type movie rather than trying to make it this big netflix original like could be in the movie theaters like rom-com historical fiction whatever and it wasn't a rom-com it's like romantic dramedy but i don't know like chick flick i guess is like the other term that they were trying to like maybe put this into but yeah i just felt like a lot of the characters fell flat compared to the book but I did think that the people in there were good at acting, so that was good. And uh, I'm trying to think. You said something that made me think of something, but um, it's just out of my brain. Oh, well, I did... Okay, so for the people that don't know about this, this starts in 1941 during World War II, and then, like, after I don't know how long, how many minutes, it flashes to in the future... Well, it's still the past, but 1946, post-war. At different times, we get glimpses of what it was like in Guernsey during World War II with the German takeover. And some of the... It's, like, pretty intense, some of the scenes. How did you feel about the way they showed what was happening? Um, I thought a lot of that was really cool, like the flashing back and whatnot. And it gave us time to see Elizabeth on screen, who I thought was lovely. Like, she was a great actress. And I think her character is so interesting that she puts others, like, before herself. I honestly wish that there was more of her in the movie. Because she's, like, Elizabeth is, like, the center of this group. And she's not really the center of this group for long in the movie, she like kind of is but it goes away when they're trying to focus more on like Juliet and Dazi and Juliet should she write or should she not and things like that which I understand because Juliet is the protagonist in this film but I just thought that they could have focused more on Elizabeth also for those that like don't know Guernsey is an island off of England And it was completely shut off from the outside world for like five years. The Germans came in, they shut down the postal service, like shut down any deliveries and stuff that you had to live basically off of what was there or what the Germans were bringing in, which wasn't a lot because the Germans were like stealing food from the people, like stole all their pigs, were like forcing them to grow vegetables and stuff so that they could basically get first pickings and everything. And a lot of people were starving there, so... They had absolutely no contact with anybody. And so when Dazi mails Juliet for the first time, it's like almost literally like the first time he's contacted anybody outside of Guernsey in five years. Yeah, I think that the history is was interesting 
So you're saying that that was actually real, like that genuinely happened during World War II. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting to have the history aspect in there, but some of the way it's portrayed, so the German, the Nazis are coming and they are stealing the animals and Dossie's a man who used to be a pig farmer. I don't know if he farmed other things too, but for sure pigs and you can see them taking away the pigs. And so the way the group actually gets together is because Amelia, who is this older woman who has taken uh, Elizabeth to be her own daughter, really, because her own daughter got killed in the war from the war somehow she got bombed i think i don't remember amelia hid a pig and elizabeth had an idea of getting the people together to have a feast and so dossy was invited and a guy named how do you say that old man's name eben eben okay i just wanted to make sure i was saying that correct because i do have a cousin or we have a family friend whose child's name's Eben, and I was like, wait, did I just get that confused? And then there's Isola, Isola, uh, one, however you pronounce her name, and they come together to create this, or to have this meal, and Isola makes gin, and uh, let me tell you, though, this pig that they're roasting, I don't know what you thought about that, but Y'all, I am vegan, and that was a bit much for me. I was like, I don't need to see these pig ribs. Oh, I I was not a fan of that scene. <laughs> I, I thought the dinner all in all looked pretty good, especially when it was on each other's plates. But yeah, the ribs were like a little aggressive all up in my face because they like stick out of the, the pig. That's like how they like kind of carried it over. Yeah, and so they had Dossie come over to butcher it because they knew that he would be able to do that job. And Eben comes with his own creation, the potato peel pie, because they don't have flour or butter or anything else. So apparently it's terrible, which I feel like, how could it be? It's potatoes. Come on. I think it's because it's like unseasoned, unflavored like potatoes, like just straight up. If you just mashed potatoes up, That'd be good, in my opinion. Like, I agree. I think it tastes good, but he probably, like, baked it weird. I don't know. But It's probably, like, a like, hard rock. Yeah, I feel like you need some, like, salt or pepper in there to make it, like, ideal. But, I mean, I've eaten, like, a straight-up baked potato without putting anything on it. I liked it. Same. So, I don't know if they're just sick of potatoes, and maybe Juliet is just, like not used to flavorless things but I guess yeah I didn't think it was gonna be like you would absolutely die because it's so disgusting but yeah because they were saying it's awful and then at the end of this feast that they're having Evan is pretty drunk he's and they're walking back to their houses I would assume when they get caught by the Nazis and they ask them why they're breaking curfew, and Elizabeth sees a book in the Nazi's pocket and says, like, oh, we had a reading group, and then he's like, oh, what's the name of the group? And she's like, the Guernsey Literary, and then Eben being drunk is like, and the damn potato peel pie. <laughs> they're all, like, adding on. They're like, the Guernsey Literary, and potato peel pie society and then they they have to just make it work so they go and find books and uh they have an observer come and listen in and apparently he just fell asleep the first time and never came back so that was that yeah so that's the origin of the name of the society which they got out like the very first scene which i wish there would have been a little bit more like I don't know, desire, like, what is the name? I want to figure it out because it's like, okay, you get the name out right away. Not that that's the only storyline, obviously, but I just, like, wanted there to be a little bit more surprise or wait for that specific moment because it's such a pivotal part of all these people's lives and everything. So that would have been my wish for that. 
but I don't get everything I want. I understand. Another real big change was that Mark and Juliet are like actually seem to be in love with each other where Juliet is like still a strong woman but like she doesn't commit to him right away like it's not like she's going out with other people or anything it's like she just like doesn't like she doesn't say yes if he when he proposes or anything and that and I don't even think he proposes until he gets to Guernsey like he does go to Guernsey and talk to her there but I'm pretty sure he like proposes there and she does say no and so I didn't like the fact that she said yes and then he comes and like takes her away like yes he was there to reveal the information that Elizabeth was dead and had gone to basically a concentration camp is where she was sent to and all that and so then she like goes back with him but then comes to her own and is like no I'm not in love with you or whatever it just made her feel I don't know less strong than the character in the book or like she grows to be this much more self-assured woman throughout the book and I think that diminishes it a little bit by her like not that you can't be in love with somebody and be like self-assured but she's like willing to like run back with him to London and or like do all this stuff and it just seemed sad uh the way she was acting towards him though was kind of making me think of the movie Carol and how Therese acts towards whatever her boyfriend's name was because she seemed like she was just stringing him along which I found interesting did you notice that at all no I really like I wrote down like I was shocked I was like she actually seems to be in love with Mark like at the end like when he gets engaged and when they get engaged and stuff like that like she actually seems like excited to me maybe I just read it wrong yeah I never ever got that vibe I was like "Uh uh-uh she don't like him (laughs) she's mm -mm. she's she's playing him or something um and did you notice how they had to sprinkle a tiny bit of gay in there <laughs> with her publisher? His name's Sydney. Mm-hmm. And then they just like mentioned that he likes boys' names. <laughs> yeah, that's about as far as it goes in the book. She like it was writing Isla or Isla when that happened. And she said like yeah Sydney is like a homosexual or something weird like that and then said or Isola was like I promise to keep this secret like I won't tell a soul and stuff like she's very sweet and like was like I'll take this to the death with me and whatnot it was very cute but yeah they had to had to have a little gay in the past because there are no people of color so well there were um, at the beginning weren't there at like I dance I only distinctly remember seeing one and it was when Mark and Juliet were toasting their champagne and he was the freaking server and I was like cool (laughs) awesome yeah we love that for them so great I mean Uh, it is the 40s but still it was I was like who cares let's like not have a person of color be the server how about that yeah and so because there was no diversity they needed a little gay or something I don't know I think they just needed a reason for no one to be jealous that Juliet was like working with Sydney it's like he's her boss and publisher and like lifelong friend so the way they became friends was because in the book is because Juliet is best friends with his sister Sophie who is like a big part of the book only to like get her past out of it like to get Juliet's past but I mean she wasn't necessary in the movie but that's how she became friends with Sydney like all this time and like being childhood friends with somebody doesn't mean that you're gonna ever be in love with them and honestly that's probably like the most trustworthy you know male in this woman's life like obviously if they were in love with each other they probably would have acted on it at least once in the like 
25 years that they've been alive. No, of course that might not always be the case, but they've been very close since they were like five. So I don't know. I, I think that was literally the only reason that the authors made him gay was so that, you know, there was no reason to be jealous. Which I guess I wish we would have gotten a little more detail on that relationship in the movie because I definitely didn't know what you just said because that was in the book, not the movie. <laughs> Something I guess that we should probably talk about too is the fact that Dossie is watching a little girl named Kit and Kit calls Dossie daddy, but that is not actually daddy. He's just watching her. It was Elizabeth's daughter. Elizabeth had a baby with a German soldier. And she one night went to help a sick soldier boy and she brought Kit to Dossie's house. It wasn't a soldier boy, it was a slave. Like one of the uh, people from the camp, I think. Oh, I thought they called him a soldier boy. I think they called him a slave boy. Well, a sick boy. And he, so Elizabeth brings Kit there and Dossie's like, no, like, you can't do this. And She's like, do you have bread? And Dossie gives Elizabeth a piece of bread. And she's like, because you'll give me the last piece of bread when I ask for it, that's why I'm leaving her to you. And then we find out that moments after she starts helping this boy, the boy gets shot and she gets arrested. And then when she gets arrested, she gets sent away. And that is how Dossie then becomes the father figure in Kit's life. Which is not in the book, but I do like this. I also did like, though, in the book that they were all kind of like the caretaker of Kit. Like, they all would watch her pretty much equally. But in order, I didn't think they resolved it very well in the book. Because in the book, when Juliet and Dazie, like, get together, like, they get Kit. Which seemed really weird because, like, she's with everybody. Like, everyone watched her. So it made a lot of sense in the movie, the change, so that when they get together, it makes sense that Juliet is also watching Kit. We also don't see Kit and Juliet get as close as they do in the book, because in the book, they're like extremely fond of each other. Yes, they say it. Yes, we see that one like little moment when she's watching Kit. But I thought it made sense that Juliet would end up being like one of the main watchers of Kit in the book. Again, not just Kit, and, or not just Julia and Dazi, like, that was weird, but their relationship seemed more fully formed, um, so I think, I think that is the literal reason that they made Dazi the sole caretaker, because they didn't develop it enough in the script between Kit and Juliet. So that's, that's my opinion there. That would make sense, and it is interesting how she kind of just bounces around. I mean, she probably obviously bounces around less in the movie because you just said that, but even she'll go to Amelia's and Amelia's not actually her grandma, but you know, that she's taking on that role. So poor little girl in a world without parents. Both of them are dead. In the book, does Juliet propose to Dossie like she does in the movie? Because in the movie, what happens is, well, do you want to explain what happens? Um, you can explain it. I'm going to go grab the book and <laughs> see if I can find that section. Because I actually don't remember. I read this like in January or February. Okay, so what happens in the movie is that Juliet has written this uh, manuscript on the society. And she sends it to them and s- apologizes and says, you know, like... I know I said I wasn't going to write this about you, but I had you and now it's yours to do with it what you want. And then she says something else like about how they are her family. And after reading that letter, Dossie's like, she, I'm going to go find her. She's not with Mark anymore. And Eben's like, when does it say that? And he's like, it's in the letter. Like, he just knows. So he's going to find Juliet, and Juliet's going to find Dossie. And she's getting on this boat, and he's walking by a boat, and then she sees him, and they're kind of, like, chasing after, or she's kind of chasing after him. And then finally he turns around, and they get close to each other, and I can't remember. They, like, say something, and then she's like, 
will you marry me? And they haven't even kissed yet. And, and then they do kiss, but I was just like, that's bold. And she's like, I'm just in love with you. And will you marry me? And he's like, yes. I was like, can you imagine just proposing to someone that you've never even kissed before? Yeah, that's the weird part from it. But I thought it was pretty cute. Okay, so there's another character in this book called Remy. And she's a woman. I don't remember entirely how she knows Dozzy, but they have like this some sort of relationship that they're very close but like she went away I think also to a camp or had to leave for some reason and she's like deathly ill and stuff and they bring her back and like he nurses her to health and like is watching over her and things like that and I think that inspires Juliet to take Kit I might be wrong um but anyway, I just saw this telegram from Juliet to Sydney. It goes, I'm entirely miserable. Saw Dazi in St. Peter Port this afternoon, buying suitcase with Remy on his arm, both wreathed in smiles. Is it for their honeymoon? What a fool I am. Blame you, wretchedly, Juliet. Because I think Sydney is the one that realizes that she's in love with Dazi or whatever because of their letters. But I'm almost to the end. I'm trying to figure out if... Because the end is not in letters, like the very end. It's like... So the whole book is in letters except for the ending? Except for like a section. It's very weird. Like, oh, they're detection notes that Isola sends. Isola. I said Isola the whole time I was reading this, so whoopsie. Well, I can't remember which way they say in the movie either. And she was an interesting character. She was so fun. I uh, loved her. She was, like, crazy, but, like, really, like, the best friend, like, anyone could ask for, I think. She was just, like, wholeheartedly excited, accepting, like, I just felt like she loved life, and I don't know if that was just because of the occupation and, like, how she came out of it, but she was just so wonderful. Yeah, the only thing I noticed that I would bug me is that she's like not a person who seems to know what personal space is she gets like really close to everyone (laughs) and being a person who is not a get all up in someone's face type of person I I kept feeling like oh man she's breaking the bubble she is breaking that bubble scoot over scoot over but her her personality was very fun All right, I found it, everybody. It's, like, almost the last page of the book. She does ask Dazie to marry her, so I love that. It's not in the same way, obviously, because no one goes back to London, but he's like, I have a question to ask, or she goes, I have a question to ask you. Would you like to marry me? So it's very sweet. It is sweet, and then I like that in the movie, you can see, so Mark was, like, this wealthy man, and the ring she got was massive, (laughs) It was really big. And then it was like kind of ugly. Like, if I got that ring, I would like very much be like, thank you. I very much appreciate this. But if my like future husband thinks that that's the ring I want, obviously we did not communicate to at all and we should not be getting married because I am just like, I make it very clear to every human on this planet what kind of ring I want. So, obviously, if this person engaged me with, or proposed to me with a ring like that, they were not listening. <laughs> they didn't understand. But I like then at the end when she's married to Dossie or they're engaged, I guess we don't know for sure. I'm assuming they're married. Um, her, she puts her hand over on Dossie and you can see the ring and it's just a simple gold band. And that just feels more her too. And just like the difference where... Some people might go for that man that has the money or person that has the money, but to her, like, that just didn't matter. Yeah, she's literally, like, marrying a pig farmer with, like, a two-room home, you know? I think she has gotten Elizabeth's old home by now, um, I'm assuming, because that's where she, what she wanted to purchase when she went back, but... She, like, really just cared about the people, and she's a writer. She 
can write from anywhere. I mean, we've seen it even in present day. You don't have to write from LA or New York or Chicago. I mean, Stephen King lives in Maine of all places. No one lives there. And he's like the most famous author that a lot of people know. And he lives in Maine and can be successful there. It doesn't matter. So I thought that that was very cute. And I love that she went back and it just felt very natural. It felt that type of ending though felt like a Hallmark movie to me where there's like the almost kiss between her and Dozzy. Then Mark shows up. <gasps> terrible fiance and like you just know that they're gonna break up I mean not that he's a bad person I mean he's not right for her but it's just they did not look or fit well together um I did like I said I did think that she seemed in love with him but they just like were weird together so it was like the almost kiss then she runs off but then she realizes she was wrong and comes back and like kisses Dazi and it's they're married so happily ever after yeah the ending just happens really quick I guess but the one thing that I found interesting too was that when Juliet is breaking off the engagement Mark gets well, first of all, can we just discuss the fact that his name is not Mark? It's Markham. It's like, <laughs> I've never heard that name before. Sorry if that's your name and I just laughed at it. I don't mean to laugh and, and make fun of you. it's an American name. guy. Like, I guess I would maybe buy it more if he was British or, like, some other nationality. But he's, like, American. So it just didn't seem like a name that I'm used to. But it could definitely be a very common name for people in the 40s I guess yeah who knows we weren't alive then but he obviously gets mad and like he's like like getting angry but then there's an interesting twist because he's left and she says goodbye Mark and then he he pops in and he kisses her, her the top of her head and says goodbye Juliet and then he takes the champagne and leaves <laughs> the champagne part was so funny but yeah, okay. Also, can we just, like, talk about how strong Juliet was in that moment? Like, to keep being, like, you deserve better. Like, you no, know, and you will find that person. While he's, like, yelling at her, which I totally understand, I would be absolutely, like, ticked off, too, if the person that I thought I was in love with and proposed to, like, return the ring. I mean, eventually I would be happy that I didn't go through with a wedding. That wouldn't have been a happy marriage. But... I would be like absolutely like pissed off too but she was like so strong like holding her ground like wanting the best for him and stuff like that so I thought that was very sweet of her and like she did not have to be like holding her ground and being so like polite and strong and and pleasant towards him especially while he was like yeah I do deserve better it's not I'm not gonna find it at this table oh man oh man that was rough but he also you know comes in with this did you ever love me and she's like I loved our time together and that is a true reality for some relationships is that one person's totally in and the other person's just not and I think that that's a good thing for people to be aware of is <laughs> like make sure you're both feeling the same things like check in with your partner are you on the same page? Because, oh, could you imagine, like, being on either end of that? If you were the person that proposed to someone and then they said yes, but then they gave the ring back, like, that'd be terrible. But I, I personally think it'd be worse, in my opinion, to be the person where you were proposed to, but you weren't really feeling it. And then you said yes, and then you have to be like, never mind. Can we real quick side note, but a tangent that I think needs to be said, public proposals are like so much pressure. I think it's fine if like, let's say one, the one person has been like kind of nagging the other person to like propose, like, I mean, that's kind of rude, but like, you know, for a fact, they want to be proposed or engaged to you okay, maybe, or, like, they have given you hints, like, I want to be proposed to at a restaurant or wherever. 
that's fine. But like, if you've only kind of like, one, not even talked about marriage with this person, uh, don't propose to them. Because you should pro- you should talk about your future and marriage. It can still be a surprise when you propose to them, but you need to talk to your partner. Also, like, it just feels like there's so much pressure to say yes, because if you say no, you look like an asshole for some reason, even though everyone around you has zero idea about this relationship. You know, they're always excited when you say yes, but like, if you say no, you're the bad person instead of like the person that's proposing to you because that person could be like trying to, I don't know, like manipulate you or something in some way. It could just be that like you weren't feeling it. So like now you look like a jerk in front of everyone and they weren't doing anything wrong. But like, I don't know if I was watching a proposal and the person said no, I'd probably be like, hey, do you need to talk? Like, you okay? Like, after, because I'm sure they're not going together wherever they're off to. I'd be like, hey, come come hang out with us. <laughs> like, you obviously need somebody right now, because everyone else here hates you. Yeah, I agree with that, because every time I see a public proposal in a movie, I'm just like, they are being forced to say yes right now. <laughs> you can't say no. And then they'll, like, either decide that they want to say no later or they're going to be stuck with a decision they don't want or it is actually what they want and so that worked out fine but it's uncomfy (laughs) I don't like it yeah and it's like I don't even know it just especially like I've seen it at sports games not me personally but like on tv and or like the kiss cam and stuff it's like it's always with the most shy person, I feel like, that they're trying to get to kiss them or trying to propose to. I'm like, know your partner. I understand the kiss cam is one thing because they don't know how shy or like awkward or even if you're dating and which I think it should be eliminated because that's really freaking weird having just a whole stadium watch you kiss somebody. No, thank you. But like a public proposal at a game with a shy partner just seems like so rude because they have to like have everyone watch them even if they're gonna say yes and like love you so much like I'd be upset at you for like ruining this engagement but here's another side of it though after you get engaged re-propose to each other over and over again to get a bunch of free stuff propose at a restaurant get some free dessert Like, when you go on vacation, say you just got engaged, they'll give you free stuff. Like, take advantage of it. Like, that first year of either being engaged or being married, take advantage of it. Okay, that is my advice. I have never been engaged or married, but I have heard on so many podcasts from so many people, like, you will get perks because people love love, and it's awesome. Okay, so take advantage, go to other towns, do it there, because I'm sure it'll, (laughs) people will talk if you live in a small town like we do in North Dakota, but take advantage of it, people. You're not going to get this chance again unless you go on vacation somewhere random and just tell them that you just got married. Well, I don't know how we turned this podcast into a whole big engagement spiel, but that is our thoughts on that. Marriage advice Uh, from two unmarried people. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. The last thing that I... Two last things. One, the kiss between Dazi and Juliet was weird as frick. It was uncomfortable. It was gross. It was a bad first kiss, and it wasn't played up for jokes, so I hated it. Hannah is literally... Agreed. Ew. (laughs) The mouths were like... Ah. I was like, ew. Ugh. (laughs) Um, and then also they're implying that Juliet wrote the book, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which doesn't make sense because the actual book is letters. And two, like, I don't understand. Okay. The, the, the second one, there isn't a second, but it's, it's like Inception here. Like the book inside the movie, inside the book, inside the movie. But in real life, she does write the article about them, like halfway through the book. And then she like writes other things later. Okay. 
I, though, do think that Amelia has a very good point that they shouldn't write about. Can you hear the stomping? <laughs> Those are my upstairs neighbors. Yeah. All right. I love my life, in case anyone is feeling bad for me. <laughs> That's my life. Okay. Um, Amelia doesn't want Juliet to write the article bec mainly because if Elizabeth was dead, which they had not known at the time, they actually found out from Mark, which I think we said, but anyway, um, she finds out, or if Elizabeth is dead, the only living relatives of Kit would be Germans who could come and take her away. And yes, no one knows that outside of like the town of Guernsey, basically, that Elizabeth, <laughs> my upstairs neighbor so much. <laughs> <laughs> I swear they're tap dancing or something upstairs. They like know when I'm home and they're like, where's Rachel's room? Okay, <laughs> but no one outside of Guernsey knows that Elizabeth like had an affair with a German soldier and whatnot, but it still freaks Amelia out and I can totally understand that. So I think that's actually better because I think she probably talks about it in her article that she wrote for the London Times, so... I thought that the people who were writing this movie really thought into it a little bit better. So that was cool. And um, I also, though, am on the side of Amelia with the whole, like, being mad that she was with a Nazi because that, like, I don't think I could be excited about that or, like, think that, I don't think that star-crossed lover story, I don't think I could support yeah, and in the movie, I don't know if they do it in the book, but they show that, like, oh, this man's a good man. He came and helped Dossie birth a cow, and they're friends. And obviously, there are people who are good people that are just, like, under a bad thing. Like, maybe he was forced into doing this, and he didn't believe in what the Nazis were doing, but he is part of that group, and he is here doing their work so i don't know it's like i could try to see it from two different perspectives but we didn't see him like protecting anybody you know like i want to see him like oh yeah i'll take care of this boss and then like not doing anything about it i want to see him being a good nazi you know, to show that he might have been forced into this or maybe as a change of heart or something happened to where he is actually actively trying to help these people, sneaking them food, not making them register the cow, something, you know, something here. Also, the most heartbreaking moment of this entire movie, I thought, was when Dazi was going to go tell Kit that her mom was dead and I think it was Isla was like, she's just four. Like, how could she understand? And then Amelia goes, I'm older than time and I understand nothing. And then breaks down sobbing. It was, I thought that was really sad. What about you? I did think that was sad, but I personally thought the saddest part was when Eben had to send away his grandson on the boat. I was like, that part is so sad. And he rubbed the metal elizabeth's like dad's metal like to a nub basically it was like so smooth because she said if you rub it like you can't help but be brave and he's like i needed to be brave a lot over there i was like <laughs> bye but yeah they sent out all of the children basically from guernsey before the occupation happened like a day or two before they showed up so well, that is all that I have to say on it. I feel like now is the time for social media stuff with the tap dancing roommates in the background. Uh, yeah. Oh, first, my fun fact real quick is that like oh, yeah. four of these actors are from Downton Abbey, apparently. So that was really cool. And Hannah, do you want to try the social media today? Yeah, let's see. Let's see how well I do. Okay. First up, if you want to email us something, you can email us a question, suggestion, feedback at you talking to me po podcast at gmail.com. 
So Rachel's trying to feed me the answers here. Um, our Instagram, which we post about what's coming up, um, when an episode goes live, all the things maybe we'll have questions on there for you to answer sometimes. It is at you talking to me dot podcast. Our Twitter is you talking to me 11 because we're both number one. Uh, our YouTube is you talking to me and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the little notification bell so you are notified every single time we post. We are in video now so you can see us. <laughs> see what Rachel just did right there. You'll only know if you watch the video. Um, and there's subtitles on there if you need them. I feel like that was all the social medias. Okay, coolio. Um, with that, our outro is Rachel. <laughs> Real quick, I'm Rachel. And I'm Hannah. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. Bye. Bye.